Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our um, presentation of an interview with our playwright of our production of Burn uh, that will be showcased at South Simcoe Theatre this uh, this 2022 season. My name is Richard Birch, and I'm here with uh, our um, uh, my other co-producer, Mel Hinch. Hi, Mel. Good morning, Richard. Good morning. And we are also joined by Mr. John Muggleton, who is the author and, and playwright of Burn. Hi, John. Hi, thanks. Uh, thanks for inviting me to this. This is great. You're very welcome. We're really thrilled to have you uh, with us today so we can discuss your play. Uh, mm -hmm. We're very excited to, uh, to showcase this. Uh, rehearsals have been going on for about uh, just over a month now, and I know the cast is excited and they're, they're just diving right into it. They're loving, they're loving the story and they're loving the text. Oh, that's um, great. So yeah, we wanted to, uh, to talk about this with you today. Uh, so I'll start, we'll start with you, Mel. I think you have a, the first question for John today. Okay, and again, welcome, John. It's uh, really, it's such a treat for us to actually have a playwright that we can speak to. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's always a bonus for us. And you live yeah, just in definitely. Ottawa, so you're, you're in our own province too. That's, that's right. A double bonus. Yeah. In yeah. The same area. yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I'm always fascinated just by the whole process of writing. Mm -hmm. So, my first question for you is what is your routine like when you begin a new writing project? Well, it, first of all, you know, uh, so much of it is mental, right? I have, you know, you come up with different ideas and you map it out in your brain and you see if you can, you know, stretch it out like there's uh, you know any everyone has all sorts of great ideas for stuff but you know having to uh, develop it into you know an hour and a half or two hours or you know whatever it is, is always the challenge so I you know I come up with an idea I think about it I think about what you know what could come before that what could come after different storyline to see if I could come up with something that I could start sitting down to to map out because if I can't think of other parts of that story I don't really want to, to start it unless I go, oh, that would be interesting because then this could happen and then that could happen, you know. Right. Uh, but once I, like, you know, with with uh, with Burn and then with Act of Grace, um, you know, I, I treat it and I teach playwriting and uh, and I, I always tell my students, and this is something I do, you have to treat it like a part-time job or you won't do it. So you have to be fairly, you have to be disciplined, you know. So at first uh, with Burn, I can't, it's a while ago now, but, you know, I said, okay, so Thursday nights and Sunday afternoons are my hours that I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write. I can add hours if I want, if I'm really on a roll, you know, I don't stop and, and not go on it, but I have to write for that, you know, Thursday evenings, I think it was, and Sunday afternoons for three hours. And that's, <clears throat> I have to be writing, even if I end up getting rid of most of it or some of it or, you know, but it always kind of turns into something. So you have to, you know, I try to treat it like a, a job because otherwise, you know, you get distracted and I'm the worst person for that, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, Netflix on in the background and I'll be writing and watching Netflix, you know, <laughs> so uh, I have to say, oh, no, okay, let's treat it like that. So then once I sit down, <clears throat> I start writing and I kind of have a plan, you know, where, where the story is going. <clears throat> I just write and I, I just, you know, uh, I picture, I just have the conversations in my head. Like if somebody comes into a room, what, you know, what would they say? What would somebody else say? Uh, how, how does the conversation develop? You know, <clears throat> you can't have somebody sitting there for a long period of time, not saying anything. You've got to make sure that it's a fairly even conversation with all the different characters, unless there's a reason why not one of them isn't talking and just kind of let the story and then say, okay, well, here's, you know, I call them breadcrumbs where I say, okay, so I'm going to plant a bread, I'm going to drop a breadcrumb here, a little thing that the audience can go, oh, that's weird. Or, oh, uh, interesting little quirky thing. And then those breadcrumbs lead to the bigger part of the story, which was my original idea. So with, with burn, I actually had two ideas and I, I kind of put them together sort of the, uh, you know, I thought, you know, this the story actually of Jimmy Knuckles is a, actually based on a true character. He lived in a small town, um, uh, you know, not far from where I grew up. And uh, he was a strange character and he was a recluse and all that kind of stuff. And I, I 
sort of came up with that story why you know um so i just started writing that story about what what if what if what if and then you know the whole idea i had was you know something uh you know something that you said years and years and years ago has ripple effect you know and years later it, it could have a tremendous impact or come back to, to haunt you in some way. So that was kind of how I started with that idea and just kept writing and rewrites and rewrites and rewrites. And it took about, you know, if I were to put squish it all together, um, you know, it'd be, a, you know, six months, seven months of, uh, you know, getting all together to the point where I could have a workshop with actors reading it and a, and a small audience where they could just sort of workshop and listen to it. I could listen to it and make notes, but that's basically in a nutshell is how that came about. Now to curiosity, when you were workshopping it, um, what was the, what was the, the, the sort of the feedback like? Well, the first I time you put it on its feet. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, the feedback was good. It, it was a different play, you know, I tweaked a lot over, you know, since I had two, I workshopped it twice. One thing I asked, and I didn't ask a lot of theater people to come because theater people will just analyze you know the direction or you know mounting it and all that kind of stuff i didn't i didn't really want feedback as far as oh you know it'd be interesting if a neighbor came in like i didn't want any of that and i told the i told the people that i invited about 20 people just some friends and some friends of friends and just random people from different walks and i said that well, i'm not looking for advice i'm not looking for suggestions or ideas i don't want that well all i'm looking for is if any of you are confused about anything that's happening, because of course with this play, there's twists and turns and conversations mm -hmm. change and the mood changes in the room. And so I, that was my main concern was, is anyone confused at any point in this, in this story? And, uh, you know, the, the, there, there really wasn't it, you know, it was straightforward enough, even at that stage that uh, there, you know, there were a few people that asked questions, I thought, oh, okay, well, that needs to be cleaned up a little bit, or I need to sort of tweak this or tweak that, but nothing major. And then I went back and did that. I had a second uh, round <clears throat> and then I invited, you know, different people and some of the same people, I guess, and, and then did it again. And this time uh, before I, it was, uh, just a just a reading of it with the actors and this time we did sort of a staged reading so there was you know a little bit of movement and a little you know the next level of so right. people can sit back and watch people get up to go get a drink or sit down or walk into the room you know that kind of thing and then at that point I had a pretty solid uh, piece and the, and the feedback was very good and uh, and then I just said okay well time to get it up on its feet and find a theater to to do it you know it's really interesting. And thanks for highlighting quite a lot of your process. Um, we're just curious to know, like, what do you do if you reach a point, if you aren't sure how to proceed in the play, whether it's close to the beginning or with a particular scene, or what, what are your methods to sort of push forward with, with a, with a storyline where you reach some sort of creative barrier or blockage? Yeah. Yeah, it's it happens, of course, all the time to everyone. That's always the thing, a eh? writer's block. Um, you know, I just walk away from it and, you know, take the dog for a walk. Because, <laughs> you know, you, you work out all the problems of the world when you're just, you know, taking the dog for a walk or going for a walk yeah. with a purpose. You know, I can't just go for a walk. But, you know, if I have a task and I can, then I things unfold in my head and I go, okay, you know, let's just simplify things, you know, mm -hmm. because what happens is you get so many details in your head and you're thinking about all the different characters and the what ifs and what happened before. It's like, simplify it, simplify it what could happen next just think about the the a b's and c's of what's happening right here uh you've got people in a situation what can happen next what would what would be an interesting turn in or twist or something so it's just about simplifying it sometimes it's you get so many details in your head of where it should go instead of just looking at what's in front of you what are the next few pages what are the next few moments of this play and it, you know sometimes it takes a few days or or longer or shorter and then you, i sit back down and uh and then i just you know try to move on for the next few pages and then something almost always kind of some interesting thing that will somebody will say or and i think oh that'd be interesting if we talked about you know when they were young going to a cottage or something because that could tie in later with this and that so it just 
it does happen. You just have to stop, stop, step away from it or you'll go crazy. So do you keep like just a running notebook or on your laptop of just all these random thoughts so that you can then sort of pick and choose and, and meld them together? Yeah, I text, if, I, if I'm out and I'm, uh, something comes to me and I'm like, oh yes, of course, that's, that's perfect. I'll text my wife with it. So I have, cause that's the easiest, instead of finding notebook, I just, uh, I text my wife and then, so I have it. So when I get home, uh, I can look at the text and go, right, yeah, is, or I'll forget it sometimes, right? So, uh, so I'll do that. But generally, generally, when I, you know, it's in my head, you know, I, I know where I want to go with it. All of a sudden, something's clear. And I have a really good idea for how and how a twist might happen or who's what's behind a certain intention. And I'll go, yeah, I'm not going to forget that, you know, because it's like, oh, my God, that solves my problem. <laughs> so, you know, it, uh, it, it, you don't I don't have to make too many notes really because it's all you know it's all kind of just in your head this dinner party and everything the whole story is just kind of in there floating around right yeah great mm. um so I mean obviously you have ideas or visuals in your mind when you start to write like for burn you know you obviously describe the set all that yeah. kind of thing so um how do you feel whoops sorry how do you feel when you see different theater groups um, interpretations of the set or of the characters? Oh, you know, I think it's great. You know, um, you can't, you know, when you, if somebody gets the rights to do your play, it's theirs, you know, as long as they stick to the, the text and uh, stuff. I, in fact, I had a, a theater in Newfoundland the other day contact me and they, they wanted to do burn because they read it and they're like, wow, but we but it's we want we only really want to do a one act uh, version. Is that possible if we edited some stuff out? And I was like, no, that, that's impossible. It would how on earth would you ever do that? You know, and I said, no, you can't do that. You know, uh, so it's kind of funny uh, that, that, you know, people think that if they get the rights, but you know it says in the in the rights in the contract that you know uh, it's it's yours uh here's the script here's the words here's the text here's the intention here's you know all that kind of stuff whether you know the set is different great you know it, theater needs to be generic i even put in in the contract as well that because there's locations named in the play it doesn't make any sense if it's done like let's say where you guys are or if it's you know it's um in Vancouver or England or whatever, um, it doesn't make any it, do, it doesn't make any sense anymore. You have to be able to change the locations. So I have it there, like whatever area, whatever towns or locations or flights you want to put in to make sense, go for it. Change all that stuff, you know. And uh, same with because there it's a fairly uh, you know there's a, there's a lot of strong language in that play. And as you as you know, and I also say, listen, if, if you want to take it out, great. If you want to leave it in or if you want to take some of it out, you know, that's it has to suit your theater. And, and yet, you know, your audiences and, you know, you know, the town or the city, like, you know, you know what you normally do. So it has you, you have to be I feel that you have to be lenient or, you know, uh, fluid enough to say, OK, here's great. You know, I just I, you know, I'm just happy that the play's done like. You know, uh, yeah. I can't get so, you know, uptight about any changes, but it would bother me. And I haven't, you know, I haven't seen it, but I haven't seen the play that many times because of the distances. But it would bother me if if people were changing lines and or taking a line out and, you know, or adding lines. It's like, no, that, you know, that's, I went to a lot of work to write yeah. that. And, and there's a reason why all those lines are there. And, you know, sometimes it's almost mathematical, that line plus that mm -hmm. line plus that line equals, you know, an event that happens in two, pa two pages later. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think people do that. I've never known, you know, I've been in theater all my life and I've never, you know, I've seen some editing where, you know, an Agatha Christie that goes on for three and a half hours, you know, some, some <laughs> directors will go, you know, let's skip the wine tasting thing. But uh, for the most part, no. It's I, I'm happy that people just take it and, and be creative with it, however they like. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, creative license, you know, uh, allowed. But there's the play is very concise, and and there's elements, a lot of elements that have to stay in it, as you say, in order for the story to work yeah. and for it all to make sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you've also uh, talked uh, a little bit about you know um, how audiences are are able to pick on 
pick up on subtle cues that the cues that reveal components of the story. Um, do you think audiences, when they see this play, uh, leave the theater with a complete understanding of what what they saw on stage, of what actually occurred, or are you? Do you think that um, there's people leave with a, with more questions unanswered for them, for them to ponder and contemplate after experiencing the story? Yeah. Well, uh, I like. The, I call it the drive home conversation in theater. I want people to have the drive home conversation instead of just, you know, watching a play and going, oh, that was fun. Should we stop for a pizza? You know, I, 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 I like the fact that people, you know, if it's, if there is room for open-ended kind of, you know, people think, did that, like, was that a, I don't want to say too much because if somebody might watch this and hasn't, haven't seen the play, then I, I don't want to, you know, uh, spoiler, but you know, people to ask certain questions of who might be who and, and uh, which always comes up and yeah. uh, it, did certain things really happen. And uh, I love that. I like that. It, it was, it was written if the original version was even more open. It was, it was, uh, the ending was vastly different and I loved it. And it was like, it ended just like, what, what is, what the heck just happened and what is going ha what's going on and then I just wanted to end it because I like mm -hmm. that idea of just like whoa I want the answers you know mm -hmm. but it drove people crazy because they <laughs> want the answers right they want to see the you know yeah. it's like Blair Witch Project it's like where's the witch I want to see the witch um you know so I, I changed it so that there was a little bit more closure perhaps but at the same time there's still a lot of questions I I, I don't think everything needs to be tied up in a in a nice little bow and, and packaged. I, I like people to question it and come up with their own theories and talk about it, you know? Well, I, I love thought provoking theater, mm -hmm. you know, or television shows, anything like I just love, I love to delve deeper. Yeah, you know? so I, I watch think, a lot of, um, almost everything I watch is either, uh, you know, from Norway or Iceland or uh, it's Finnish or, uh, you know, Polish, a lot of the shows that, you know, I, and they're, they're so well written and the characters are so well developed and, uh, you know, the stories are, are just so well crafted yeah. uh, that it's, it's, it's so good, but they, you know, they don't wrap everything up necessarily in a nice bow, you know, it's like, well, you got, you know, life isn't like that, you know, even when you think something's completely over and everything, it's never really over, there's always, questions there's always concerns or there's doubt or whatever it is you do in your life you you always think oh was that the right thing even though it ended at the right thing you know so i i love that kind of thing you know I life like is life. really comfortable in and yeah. i find that with a lot of movies and television programs from iceland and and norway as well like yeah. they're not interested in that no, no, they're not. Uh, no. England as well, you know, yeah. terrific, terrific, you know, shows yeah. where it's like, no, things aren't, you know, uh, American, you know, stuff is so much different because it's escapism. It's like, oh, this would be mm -hmm. perfect, you know, if I, if I was living here or I lived in that house or, you know, looked like that. Uh, so the, the reality of European stuff and Nordic is just so much more interesting. So I, that's kind of my you know what I enjoy so I want the same thing in theaters to people people to think about it and question it and just have fun with it you know over a yeah. coffee or a beer and just go I don't know man I think this or I think that you know yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I much prefer that kind of theater as well just yeah. gives you much more to work with much more to yeah. think about rather than oh yeah it was really funny and uh oh good we have a dog oh here. we have a guest <laughs> I've got a cat up there. She's in her bed on top of my bookcase. Oh, I see. Yeah, <laughs> in the corner, looking on. There we go. Yeah, looking yes, on. Yes. She stays up there. But uh, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, we love your production, your play, and we're really hoping, you know, we can do justice and and just have the audience. I'm sure you will go go away. You know, thinking, wow, but you know, what did happen there? Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Who's responsible for it's this? Important. They it should. Is, yeah. You know? And that's why, and I always, I, I'm not sure if I have it in the script because I have a little, you know, playwrights blurb at the beginning, but you can't, this play, any play, you know, so I'm talking in general terms, you can't play the, you can't play the end of the play at the beginning. And by that, you, you can't, 
you can't uh, be you can't be so obvious about what perhaps is happening or what might be happening at the beginning because people don't know the situation you know I, I've se I've seen it in theater where let's say and I'm again I'm trying to be very careful so I don't give anything you know I don't mm -hmm. spoiler alert kind of thing but uh, you know I've seen plays where you know something happens to somebody mid play and they turn into a different person based on the circumstance. And, you know, then they change and they have to do something bad and all that kind of stuff. And I, you know, you sometimes see it where they, they play it like they're already bad or, or they play it with a hint of, you know, uh, you know, um, foreshadowing or, you know, whatever is what's going to happen. And, mm -hmm. and that can't really be played that way because you, you're, you're telegraphing what's happening, you know, already the audience, the characters, you don't know, like, I don't know, I could go out and get hit by a bus. I, I don't know that's going to happen. So I'm not going to be afraid of walking outside. But, you know, I see in some plays where they're, they have that trepidation, or it's like, why you wouldn't know that this is about to happen, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's important with with this play that the all, everything has to unfold as it is. And it's, a re, it's in real time, right? The play mm -hmm. happens in the, the amount of time that the play takes place. Mm -hmm. So it's unfolding. So the, the characters uh, you know, they are on for the ride. They change as the play changes. It's, it's important. I like That's how the play, in, as you say, unfolds over time. I find that adds to the tension of the play. You're watching this happen before your eyes. Yes. Uh, it, you know, what the, what's going on in the story. Um, yeah. And you're, there, there is always a moment where what's going to happen now? What's next? Mm -hmm. And that does add a, a, a great amount of intrigue as if you're in the room as well. Yeah, and that, and I'm glad, thanks, thanks for saying that. Um, you know, when I sat down, uh, you know, cause I've been a director and I, you know, an actor and everything all my life and, and playwright. And uh, when I wrote it, I very much wrote it with, as an actor, I wrote it like, oh, I'd love to say these lines. I would love to be in this moment. I'd love to be stressed out like this or whatever. And then I wrote it as a director where it's like, wow, this would be a cool play to direct where you have to, you know, the stakes are getting higher and higher and higher and higher. Like how, as a director, how could you do that? And then most importantly, I wrote it from an audience perspective. What would it, what do I like in theater? What, what do I like when I'm watching TV? What, you know, and, and the way it's written is very much like a, a movie as opposed to a play because there's no structure really to it, you know, mm -hmm. not like, oh, one act and two acts and three, acts. like it's, um, and, uh, you know, I, I wanted that as an audience because quite often when I'm watching a play, I, I get bored. I'm going to be totally honest with you. A lot of plays don't grab me, you know, so halfway through, I'm like, there, there's nothing progressing here. You know, they're kind of talking about the same thing for too long, you know, and it's not progressing. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I was writing, I was like, no, I, I like the fact that the stakes, the stakes have to be high in anything yeah. or it's, or the audience isn't going to be invested they have to find out well how are you going to get out of this or what's going to happen next or you know and that's and again that's really goes back to the european style um and i so i wrote it with the stakes getting higher and higher and higher and then adding some comedy here and there so that it can drop it can go down so that you can build again otherwise it's just gonna you're just redlining for too long you need yeah. to have those those little moments of okay and everyone can have a laugh and there is a lot of comedy in it um and then it you know then you can build and you get back to the story again just like at a just like in a in a tense meeting or something and you know everyone's kind of stressed out at a meeting or you know like a board meeting or something and then somebody makes a joke and you're like oh my god okay bill you know oh, we all needed that and then you get back to business so that's kind of how i how i like you know you kind of have to do that yeah in this kind of play I have to admit, your students are very lucky when I listen to you talk about, you know, playwriting. It's, uh, I think they would very much enjoy working with you and learning from you because oh, thank of you. your, you know, you, well, you just talked about how the different ways you look at writing a play, like from the actor's perspective, from the director's, mm -hmm. from the audience. And because you've done it all, like some, I assume, probably some playwrights have only been writers. You yeah. know, they haven't necessarily ever stepped foot on a stage to mm -hmm. know what that would be like to deliver those lines or to build that tension. Um, and similarly, they, you know, they may never have uh, directed. So mm -hmm. to come at yeah. it with that sort of three pronged 
um, approach, I think, is, is fantastic. And to give that to students, I used to be a teacher, so I'm always looking at education and, and you know, what you can learn from it. And uh, I just think well, that's, that's a fabulous thing to share. Said. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, you know, um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I was going to say when you were talking about how, you know, my favorite playwright is David Mamet. You know, I just love David Mamet and I've done a lot of his stuff and I use his stuff, you know, talk about his stuff in my classes. And, uh, you know, there's a guy who, who quite he says he doesn't like actors you know he doesn't that's not you know that's why he doesn't allow talkbacks you know he does not allow talkbacks for any of his plays it's in the rights you can't you can't have a talkback after one of his plays because he says i don't want actors talking about my work it's what they didn't write it they don't have anything to do with it they're just saying words that i gave them so it's it's very you know it's a little different kind of thing i don't think he's ever acted um but he just has that crazy genius about him not all his stuff but uh, you know, just being able to 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 tell that story about working class Chicago people and all that kind of thing. But yeah, I think you know, and also what helped, I think honestly, and I thought about this a lot over the years is uh, you know I've been in theater also in administration, you know, marketing and uh, you know all that kind of stuff. And I think also you know, I know what what I you know I know what people like what needs to be in a season i'm not saying you have a whole season of that kind of thing it's you know you, you got to have variety mm -hmm. but a good kind of a good kind of thriller ghost story element you know that kind of thing it's it could be seasonal it's it's a nice thing to plop in between two norm fosters you know uh just so i think that helped too of just thinking what what would be a fun play like you know maybe uh, Halloween would be a good time or, you know, some, something like that, uh, you know, or, you know, in the middle of winter when people just, you know, need a, a break or something. So I think all those elements kind of came into, uh, to, to writing it. Well, so what's next? Oh, sorry, Mel. No, I was just going to say, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. what's next? Do you have another play in the works? Well, I, you know, I have the other play, An Act of Grace, which is, it's, uh, it's interesting because Burns opening in three places in March. Hmm. Um, and it's funny, I don't remember the places right now. Uh, but England and then Act of Grace is, is opening in England, I think, at the at that time, or maybe Burn. I think it might be Burn. Mm -hmm. But Act of Grace, I find is a is actually my wife says it's a better play than Burn. Um, and I it's uh, I need to you know get that out a little bit more and, and get it seen. And um, I have, you know, I have an idea for a play that I've been playing around with in my head. And, uh, you know, I did once try to sit down and kind of hash it out and it didn't go anywhere. So I'm like, man, nah, I need to think about it some more. Um, you know, it'd be nice to have three plays, you know, up there and out being done. And um, so, because everything's like, for me, everything's in threes, you know, for most things, right? It's like trilogy mm -hmm. or it's, you know, that kind of thing of just the completion is for some reason, it feels like three. Uh, so I'd like to, you know, I'm starting in my head just to, to work on another one. So in a couple of years, hopefully it's, uh, you know, it's the slowest way on the planet to, and not that I'm making a living from it by any stretch, but you know, because it takes a year or so to write it, then it takes a year or so to get it kind of out there and, and get it produced if you're if you're lucky. And then, it you know, and then it takes another year, like, you know, four years later, you're like, oh, okay, great. You know, this is this is turning out okay. <laughs> you know, it's it's a it's a slow, uh, it's a slow art. Um, but yeah, there's another one coming uh, at some point. That's great. And what what genre would you say that one is? Similar thing. Uh, Act of Grace is similar to Burn in the in the style. Mm -hmm. um, it's funnier. It's d very dark, dark comedy. It's uh, laid a little bit more comedy on it, and uh, but very much a thriller, high, high stakes with all the sort of twists and turns. Um, and then the, the one that I'm writing now is again. It's I, I like that kind of high stakes thriller, uh, uh, and then I, I don't. And then, you know, whether it's more funny or funnier or not, I don't know yet, but, you know, that kind of thing. And then uh, and my wife keeps saying, you've got to just write a comedy. Never mind <laughs> dark, dark and twists and thrillers and, you know, mysteries and hauntings and stuff. So uh, I, uh, yeah, that'll be on the works at one point, but I'm, you know, 
it's it's a it's a hard it's a hard slog. I won't lie to you. So it's yeah. uh, you know a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. Uh, yeah, being creative. Yeah. Yeah. But we're awfully glad you put in that time because yeah. I think Thank our audiences are going to uh, enjoy your creativity and your slugging away to produce yes, this. So. for sure. <laughs> well, that's that's very nice of you to say. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing it. You know, I, as I say, I hope to come up that weekend, the opening weekend, and uh, try to catch it. You know both nights if I can, uh, just because it's fun to see it the first time and then the second time I can watch it. Sure. Know? We're uh, looking forward to having you out. That would be fantastic. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. So I'll see you in person. For perhaps. sure. Sounds great. Well, thank you for this, John. This has been a real thrill to talk with you My today. pleasure. My pleasure. It's nice meeting both of you and uh, and good luck with the rest of the rehearsals and uh, opening night, break a leg. Great. Thank you very much. And we'll be in touch. And we'll Absolutely. look forward to having you. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. care, John. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.